Dream matches are the stuff of wrestling fan legend. After all, what's better than seeing two larger-than-life wrestlers square off for the first time? When the WWE proclaims a dream match, they're usually referring to two of the biggest names in the industry going head-to-head. -head. Unfortunately, not all of these matches have lived up to the hype. While some have been true spectacles, others have failed to deliver on the promise of a legendary clash of titans. In fact, some so-called dream matches have been downright awful. Perhaps it was a clash of styles, or a lack of chemistry between the wrestlers, or their over-reliance on a few tired spots. But whatever the reason, these matches simply failed to deliver. You might remember some of these bouts, and if you do, you probably remember them for the wrong reasons. And we're starting with a classic. Number 10, Goldberg vs. The Undertaker, Super Showdown 2019. The biggest star in WCW vs. the most famous character in WWE history. Just the visual of these two legends sharing the ring for the first time should have been enough to get the fans roaring, but the match between Goldberg and Undertaker at Super Showdown 2019 started horrendously and then somehow got worse. During Goldberg's elaborate entrance, he knocked himself dizzy by headbutting a door, marking the first time a wrestler had legitimately concussed themselves before a match had even started. Goldberg's delirious state was evident from the moment he stepped into the ring with the dead man, and what followed was a match that would have been booed to death at even the most amateur indie show. Undertaker did what he could to remedy the match, but Goldberg's barely mobile corpse was too heavy for even the dead man to carry. A botched jackhammer dropped Undertaker directly on his skull, and a botched tombstone returned the favor to Goldberg. After nine minutes of frolicking, an irate Undertaker ended the match with a weak chokeslam, ending a lifelong dream match in a truly anticlimactic fashion. Number 9, Randy Orton vs. Brock Lesnar, SummerSlam 2016 Randy Orton and Brock Lesnar came through WWE's old developmental system together. They were both cornerstones of the Ruthless Aggression era, and they've been major attractions for almost 20 years. It's strange, then, that Orton and Lesnar have only met twice in the ring, first in 2002 when they were both rookies, and again in 2016 in their long-awaited dream match. The build to the main event bout at SummerSlam 2016 was short and explosive, including Orton making fun of Lesnar for failing a UFC drug test. While the match itself was typical Lesnar showcase, what left a sour taste in fans' mouths was the disturbing finish. Lesnar removed his gloves and pummeled Orton's head until he began oozing blood. His shots were legitimate and stiff, prompting fans to believe that Lesnar was shooting on Orton and genuinely caving in his skull. It led to some some backstage heat because no one other than Lesnar, Orton, and Vince McMahon himself knew the planned finish of the match was to give one of their top stars a genuine concussion. If not for this, the match might have been more fondly remembered, but it hasn't been. Number 8, AJ Styles vs Shinsuke Nakamura, WrestleMania 34 When AJ Styles arrived in WWE in 2016, it opened up a whole pool of dream match possibilities with guys who'd been locked in the WWE system while Styles conquered smaller promotions like TNA and Ring of Honor. However, there was one opponent who Styles had history with prior to WWE, and that was fellow recent signee Shinsuke Nakamura. Nakamura. With both men now in WWE, a feud between the two compelling performers seemed inevitable. The two had a brief stare down at Money in the Bank 2017, culminating in a huge pop that teased a future rivalry. It didn't happen for another year, but when Styles and Shinsuke faced off at WrestleMania 34, fans expected a clash that would improve on their stellar match they had together in New Japan 2016, especially as the match was taking place on the big biggest stage in wrestling. While the match wasn't bad, and may even be the best in-ring match on this list, Styles and Nakamura failed to live up to the high expectations. To finish things off, Nakamura turned heel at the end, thus kickstarting an exhausting feud between the two men that lasted way too long. We can't fault WWE for giving us the match we wanted, but the monkey's paw really curled with this one.
Number 7, Sting vs. Triple H, WrestleMania 31. Sting was one of the few WCW alumni to never make the jump to WWE during the original invasion in 2001, instead winding up in TNA in 2006. So when the Stinger finally appeared on WWE television many years later in 2014, fans rejoiced at all the possible dream matches that could follow. But bizarrely, Sting was thrust into a feud with Triple H for reasons that would become clear at WrestleMania 31. According to Sting's promos in the weeks leading up to his Mania match, he was fighting for the honor of WCW as though he was unaware that the promotion folded 13 years prior. When the Mania match rolled around, Sting entered to a tribal drum beat that seemed at odds with his iconic goth character. Triple H then dominated most of the match, but not before overweight and gray-haired members of the DX and NWO factions interfered. This resulted in a war between the two legendary factions, and Triple H picked up the victory in Sting's first ever WWE match. DX stood tall over the NWO, and the whole thing seemed like a transparent attempt to remind everyone that WWE won the Monday Night Wars over a decade before. Number 6, Roman Reigns vs. The Undertaker, WrestleMania 33 to date, Roman Reigns and Undertaker have only squared off one-on-one -on -one once, and that was in the main event of WrestleMania 33 in 2017. We have to stretch the term dream match a little for this one, because this was during the days of Super Roman, when he was constantly pushed down fans' throats despite him being booed out of every building they went to. But still, pitting the overpushed babyface against the man synonymous with WrestleMania seemed like a recipe for excitement. Could this be the moment Roman turned heel? Maybe Undertaker would pull off a surprise win. The drama around the match was way more exciting than the match itself, but as was common in WWE at the time, Vince McMahon ensured we all went home unhappy. Roman picked up a clean win over the dead man, and that was it. After the match, Undertaker symbolically left his hat in the ring as a sign of impending retirement, and it turned out the match was nothing more than a tick on Roman's list of achievements. Number 5, Seth Rollins vs. Roman Reigns vs. Dean Ambrose, Battleground 2016 The Shield might be the most accomplished faction in modern WWE, and the turbulent relationship between the three members has been the backdrop to a number of great stories and matches. So, you'd think that a triple threat match between Rollins, Reigns, and Ambrose would have been a huge attraction that could have easily main evented a WrestleMania. But that wasn't the case. The three men only did battle in a single match once, and it took place at the very forgettable Battleground 2016 pay-per-view. At the time, the three stars were in weird places in their careers. Reigns had just come off a legitimate 30-day suspension, Ambrose wasn't quite at the main event level yet, and Rollins was working heel despite getting the biggest cheers of all three men. WWE hot-shotted the match and even overshadowed it with other, more compelling storylines at the time. That's why very few few fans remember that this dream match happened at all. Number 4, John Cena vs. The Undertaker, WrestleMania 34 this entry is quite interesting because at the time, the match between Undertaker and John Cena at WrestleMania 34 was well received, but in hindsight, it has begun to feel like a missed opportunity for the WWE. The storyline going into Mania 34 in 2018 was that John Cena did not have an opponent, so in the weeks leading up to it, he decided to call out The Undertaker every week on Raw. Cena's requests went unanswered, despite a few teases, and so when Mania rolled around, Cena sat in the front row at the event with the fans instead. Later in the night, Cena rushed backstage, then came out to challenge the dead man one final time. This time, Undertaker heard the call. The two megastars faced off for the first time in nearly a decade, although the bout was more of a showcase of Undertaker's moveset rather than an actual match. In what could have been a Mania marquee match, Undertaker squashed Cena in three minutes. Number 3, Triple H vs. Scott Steiner, Royal Rumble and No Way Out 2003 
Scott Steiner debuted to a huge ovation at Survivor Series 2002, and fans excitedly awaited what dream matches the WCW legend would have with the then-thriving WWE roster. Steiner's first feud was with top guy Triple H, which at the time seemed like a perfect pairing. However, history would go on to call their rivalry one of the worst title feuds of all time. The build-up to the match consisted of arm wrestling and bodybuilding pose downs. Steiner was forced to adapt to the WWE promo style, which was difficult for a man whose promos usually consisted of incoherent shouting. The culmination of the feud ended at No Way Out in a low-energy match packed with missed spots and a screwy DQ finish. What could have been a real dream match between two major players on the Monday Night Wars ended up as a total train wreck. Number 2 Hulk Hogan vs Shawn Michaels SummerSlam 2005 Vanity and politicking, Hulk Hogan and Shawn Michaels have forged lucrative careers off of both, and in 2005, we witnessed these two egomaniacs go to war in a feud that highlighted just how sensitive old school wrestlers can be. On paper, a rivalry between these two megastars was pure money. At the time, Hogan was proving that Hulkamania could still run wild, while a rejuvenated and freshly rehabbed Michaels was putting on some of the best matches of his career. It should have been a feud for the ages, but naturally, egos got in the way and left us with a complete dud. The short program between Hogan and Michaels came to a head at SummerSlam 2005. Michaels had been forced to turn heel against his wishes because Hogan didn't want to do a face versus face match. Michaels response was to oversell Hulk's offense, flopping around the ring and turning what should have been a historic bout into a match that became legendary for all the wrong reasons reasons. Number 1 WWE vs WCW The Invasion Angle 2001 Okay, so not an individual match, but an entire storyline. Anyone who lived through the Monday Night Wars will remember fantasy booking WWE's top stars against WCW's biggest names, conjuring up dream scenarios like Austin vs. Goldberg or The Rock vs. Sting. Then, when Vince McMahon purchased WCW in 2001, these fantasy matches became real possibilities, much to the delight of fans. But that's not how it went down at all. The now infamous invasion angle was supposed to pit the biggest names of each respective company against each other in an all-out war. However, Vince didn't have access to WCW's major names like Hogan, Kevin Nash, Goldberg, or Sting. Therefore, it left us with subpar matches that certainly didn't live up to our childhood fantasies. To make matters worse, WWE had to shoehorn ECW wrestlers into the storyline to fill the gaps left behind by a lack of WCW. WCW star power. And worst of all, the WCW stars were jobbed out so aggressively that in the end, the WWE wrestlers didn't even look strong by beating them. That's why the invasion angle takes the number one spot on this list. That concludes our list of WWE dream matches that completely sucked. Did we miss any notable ones? Let us know in the comments below.